On this week's episode of Friend Code, we're talking about Super Mario Sunshine! Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Friend Code, and this week's episode I am joined by two very special guests, Mr. Daniel Budworth. Hello. Mr. Kyle Bossman. Hello. How are you all feeling after a nice 50-hour stream weekend at Easy Living? Real good. Real good? Yeah. Did you get some sleep? I did. That's the thing is you get you get nine hours of sleep and you feel like you did nothing that weekend. It's fine. The it's, body is good at recovering. You know what I mean? It I just don't know like, about that. I, I felt more tired yesterday evening than I did the whole weekend. Oh. Uh, but now no, I'm fine. I just have a lot a lot to catch up on. A lot of, a lot of games came through uh, yeah. on, on Monday. Good stuff. Good times. A um, little housekeeping before we get into... Uh, first segment the return of a segment people have been asking for um there will be no last call this week because i changed the i couldn't decide on what we'd be talking about on this episode because mm-hmm. i was torn between mm-hmm. another set of news recap episode but a lot of the news was less compelling than the previous episode the previous episode had some good stuff i felt like this was going to be like Nintendo officially comments on the Metroid Amiibo situation with the unlockable. Oh, that would have been a miserable episode. We would have been grumpy for one hour. They data mined stuff in Splatoon and in arms. Yeah. So let's speculate about the new characters. So didn't seem... Octolings? Yeah. I'm in, baby. Okay, Kyle's in for that. (laughs) Did I I, I felt like... I have a theme song for uh, Last Call. Oh, you do? Yeah. What is it? Well, let me bring it up. You keep doing your housekeeping. I'll bring it up. Okay, so we we will be changing last call to be general Q and A essentially. So that means every time I post the ep- new episode on Sunday for patrons, I will immediately after that post the request for Q- uh, for questions for the following episode. They just have to be about Nintendo. We're just gonna we're gonna destroy the old rule about needing to be about the subject of the episode because it it's just not gonna work out. Like I've learned my lesson from that. Um, you gotta do corrections because the there was a lot of news we talked about in the last episode, and we got got a few things wrong and forgot to bring up a, a few things. So the four four corrections here or things to address. Um, the Nintendo Online app doesn't close when you change the app on your smartphone; it just pauses. Uh, so you're muted and can't hear your friends, but the lobby is still active and you can go back. Uh, and the app also keeps your smartphone screen on. So no sleep mode problem. Uh, I think I said no. I not think I know. I said that if any of these following things happened, you were kicked out of your lobby essentially. Because I was going uh, off the initial Reddit thread where obviously people were overreacting and not fully testing all of it and just making assumptions. So my apologies for not following through and rechecking that thread before we started and make sure there weren't any clarifications. Or actually reading an article about how it actually worked. You got your song, Kyle? I didn't. Know, I, fr- I lost it. It's on my phone. Oh. Next time. All right. Um, when I was talking about the numbers for Evo, for how Smash performs, specifically Smash 4, uh, I was there and I forgot this happened. Uh, Twitch basically died during the Smash 4 finals. So the viewer count uh, was severely affected, or somewhat affected by that. Mm. So saying it only finished third highest out of all the tournaments... Uh, isn't necessarily fair because if there were no issues with Twitch, it might have been higher. Who's who knows? So they just wanted to point it out that like there was mitigating circumstances going on with that. That I didn't great give, use of I, mitigating. I, I didn't. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't paint the full picture, which is what I was trying to do. Um, we totally forgot to talk about or acknowledge Super Smash Brothers 64 when talking about the N64 Classic rumor. Yeah. Um, obviously, that would definitely be on there, and obviously, it'd be a one of the compelling games to use. Four controllers, which is what we were discussing, what games would actually necessitate if we lost the rare games. Like, you no know, Gold Knight, you don't need four controllers. It's just be Mario Kart. And everyone's like, Smash 64, Smash 64. So we forgot about that. And I forgot, I said it was not on Virtual Console, but it is. Donkey Kong 64 is on the Virtual Console service. Oh, is it? Yeah, apparently. Cool. Yeah. I didn't realize I that. I double checked. I think we all just didn't want it. <laughs> yeah. I think I just, like, blocked it out. And it's like, nope, I don't want to download it. Don't need it anymore. Because I was saying, like, neither it nor Diddy Kong Racing were on there, so I'm not entirely sure about the rare developed games where Nintendo completely owns those IPs, the characters. Because we're saying, like, maybe Diddy Kong Racing and Donkey Kong 64 will be on N64 Classic. And I was like, wait a second, they've never been re-released, have they? So maybe there is some kind of weird issue with that. So, who knows? The full story. End corrections. Um, But it is time for the return 
of Dear Nintendo. It's been a few episodes since it's been here. Kyle's happy. Um, I will definitely put the... I'll try and find a high-resolution cover image to put up on this so our viewers can see it better. But I'll still hold it up for you. This cover with Batman returns. Month and year. What is Look this? at that. What, month and year? Yeah. It is May, volume 48, and I think it says the year on the table of contents 95. Uh, May 1993. Ooh. 93. So Good Batman year. Returns for the NES is on the cover with a Link's Awakening preview. And I'm going to flip it over because uh, I'll try and find this wow, cover. Wow, look at that cover, though. Yeah, this cover is amazing, but the Who back, the this? Super FX chip with Star Fox ad on yeah. the back is really cool, oh, yeah. too. Link's Awakening preview inside, yeah. too. This is why I think I still am holding on to this one, because it has that Link's Awakening preview. I'm sorry, there's just a, a full page, or back cover ad that just says Super FX. Yeah, we just showed that to, that's why I just did right, on right. camera. Yeah, but, uh, like, have I, you not seen it? I'm, I'm amazed by this. I loved how they did these like realistic models. You have to like, read the copy, you gotta yeah. read that. Okay. It's the difference between looking at a picture and being there. <laughs> it's our exclusive Super FX trademark chip. It takes the Super NES trademark beyond anything you've ever imagined to new realism, to new dimensions, and Super FX technology is easy to get into because it's built in. No accessories, no upgrades. Star Fox trademark will be your first look at this amazing step forward in technology, value, and fun. It's just the beginning. So that's directly targeting what Sega was doing at the time, oh, right? Is that yeah. why they're like no accessories? It's yeah. easy to get into? Yes. That's funny. It's like just built into the cartridge. Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, Super FX. What a time. Murder Mystery Weekend. Whoa. There was a Clue Murder Mystery Weekend? Okay, I, I need to set this up. Okay. So this isn't the le this isn't the letter section. It is a letter section called Player's Pulse. Okay. There's a page here, something that says Clue Murder Mystery Weekend Contest Winner. So here, here's the setup. Okay. Nintendo Power, the Nintendo Power Clue Murder Mystery Weekend took place at Seasons Resort in New Jersey at the end of January. It's a nice place. Uh, Tim from Wixon, Michigan flew in for the soiree along with his mom, Liz, and friend Chris. A company of actors calling themselves Murder a la Carte played the roles made famous in Parker Brothers' classic game of Clue. Mm -hmm. The plot included not one murder, but two. And Tim was unmasked as the brilliant computer whiz who was secretly working with Professor Plum, the, secta the second victim. So, who done it? That's how it's written. After two days of red herrings, bribes, accusations, and mayhem. For two days. Wow. Yeah. Two days. At this hotel in New Jersey. <laughs> Think of those escape rooms you go to, like yeah. we went to with all that theme. That was like one hour. <laughs> two days of that. You got to keep it up. He flew in from Wisconsin for this. <laughs> yes, yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bribes, accusations, and mayhem. Not to mention carloads of circumstantial evidence. <laughs> the true culprit was brought to justice. Uh, the mom, I think. Yes, the mom. Mrs. His, White, oh. the housekeeper. Apparently, Albert Brody, the first victim, was too paranoid to hire a buttload. A lot of good it did him. To hire a buttload? I, a butler, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, I don't get yeah, I still don't get it. Um, they have a picture of the contest winner, and they have a picture of them here. It's really low, if I, even if I hold that it up. Right up that write-up contains a lot of details. It's still not enough. I still yeah. have no idea why that happened or what it has to do. Is there a Clue Nintendo game at the time? Is that what it is I about? I think so. Okay. Also, I think maybe the movie came out around this time. Wow. I'm not sure. Um, that was a crossover deal. So, they spent money. Somebody spent money to get into Nintendo Power. Yeah. This was when I think Nintendo went overboard with their contest. I think there's also a history of like some contests not fulfilling their promises. Like to go, like there are horror stories of like they were supposed to go meet a celebrity and it was like literally a handshake for like one second. Nothing mm -hmm. was like done as promised. Hope maybe there's a cool YouTube video about that. I'd love to watch that. That'd be amazing. Like a history of like old video game contests where mm -hmm. people talk about like their horror stories where it didn't go as planned and stuff. If it doesn't exist, you have to make it now. No, I can't. You have to. Um, this player's <laughs> sorry, Kyle. I can't. I know. I know you want it. No, I can't. No, you I said can't. That. I can't do <laughs> it. No, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do it, Kyle. Um, apparently this player's pulse, uh, write-in theme was about contest suggestions. Okay. So, 
I saw one with a, a, a three-letter abbreviation, and I think i got to read it because okay. Huber and Brad would love this, I'm assuming. All right, so this is from Chris from Canton, Ohio. I think you should have a WWF, WWE, <laughs> Super WrestleMania Players Poll Contest. The grand prize would be airfare, hotel accommodations, and two tickets to WrestleMania 9 mm -hmm. at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Second prize would be a WWF Super WrestleMania game pack and a one-year subscription to WWF Magazine. Third prize would be Nintendo Power jerseys. Nintendo Power Ooh, jerseys? That's Whoa. first place, Whoa. baby. I want that. How do we get those? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think that would be amazing. What? Is that the whole comment? That's it. That was oh, okay. It. Uh, yeah, you know what? That kid had some bright ideas. It's one about snowboarding, one about Mario Kart, one about Star Trek. I want to hear somebody complaining about something, though. Okay. Is that it? Oh, that's all. This they, this is a shorter Players one Players' polls are short year. this month. Okay. Um, read, uh... Oh. Gail Tilden, editor-in-chief, wrote something this month. Ooh, all mm. right, Gail. Editor's Corner. How many of you use the controller and Game Boy decals from the January Super issue? So if you don't remember... Blood raised his hand to I'm listeners. sure Blood remembers this, but the January issue, the New Year's issue for Nintendo Power for many years, was like this super bonus issue. Like, had, like there was one where they did a Mega Man X cover, where it was like tin foil or something for like X is yeah, art yeah, yeah. on the front. And that was a subscriber version. And on the page behind it, it was like a protective cover. It was really awesome. Then it had like the normal color cover inside of it. But if you bought it on newsstands, it was just the X artwork ah. without like that tin foil type cover. Pays the sub. Um, they used to have like bo the the first new supply power supply catalog would be in there. They do like bonus inserts and stuff that were like awesome. So these sticker decals were probably part of the insert from the January '93 issue. Okay, we think they're a lot of fun. These decals, however. If there ever comes a time when you feel like taking them off, you may run into a sticky situation. Oftentimes, when one of the stickers is removed, some of the glue that is used on the back of the sticker will stay on the controller. One remedy, which is contrary to the owner's manual, <laughs> is to apply a small amount of regular household rubbing alcohol, don't use a lot, to a cotton cloth and rub the glue away with the dampened cloth. Adult supervision is advised. It may take a bit of elbow grease, and you may have to repeat the process, but you'll eventually remove the tacky substance without damaging your controller. So they obviously had to write that because they probably got some complaints yeah. about those stickers and from parents. I, I bet there was just a controversial thing to write this that, that negates the the manual. That's yeah, because yeah, they said that. Like it says don't ever apply any kind yeah. of liquid to your game or controllers or anything to clean them. I bet yeah. there was an hour-long discussion about whether they should publish that or not. <laughs> that was, like, yeah, we should have a time machine. Yeah. Go back to that m in meeting and see what, like, you know, went into that conversation about, we really got to do this. But we can't get caught. But, like, we got to be careful. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, one of my NES controllers still has it. What's the poster? What's the poster? I want to see the poster. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> 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 That's a good poster too, man! Look at that thing. That looks like a fun game. Bubsy coming, coming soon. soon in claws encounters of the third kind. All right, so I'm wow. trying to get to the real quick before we move on. I'm trying to get sure. to the, the Link's Awakening preview. Hey Kyle. Yeah. The Nintendo Power Awards '92, the Nesters. The ballots have been cast and the champions have been crowned. They were chosen by you. The faithful readers of Nintendo Power. Why am I oh, nervous about this? I remember this? checking these boxes. Okay, so this is all fan voted. The winners for graphics and sound, okay. great character animation, superior backgrounds and maps, and a cool soundtrack are the elements that boosted the winners in each system category to victory. All first places enjoyed a landslide victory. I'm going to say Donkey Kong Country game. I for, don't know which came for out. For graphics and sound for Super Nintendo, oh. the winner is... The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, <laughs> beating out Super Star Wars and Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally. <laughs> Roadrunner got robbed. Wow. Those were for, the top for, three for best graphics for, of 1992? For okay. For theme and, th theme and fun, Street Fighter II, The World Warrior, number one, mm -hmm. A Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, number two, 
and Mario Paint for number three. Mario for Paint theme went that early. Fun? Yeah. By the way, in Game Boy category, Super Mario Land 2 won both those for the Game Boy version. Cool. Um, for challenge. Challenge. Street Fighter. Uh, the balance between action and role-playing games on the final ballots in the category was fairly equal. Um, okay. Now for the winner for Super Nintendo, A Link yep. to the Past. Okay. Super Star Wars is bold. Yeah, that's super hard. Super yeah, Star Wars is hard in Link to the Past. And then Super Smash TV. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, How Man, do they, what, uh, D-pad and the face buttons are the, uh, like, that's a twin stick shooter, super, the Smash TV. Um, so I wonder if it was, like, D-pad and the face buttons. Use the D-pad and the face buttons stick. for that. Yeah, and then use the shoulder buttons for other, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, for play control, Street Fighter 2 was number one. Nice. Super Mario Kart was two. Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time was three. Super Mario Kart wasn't for best graphics? Wow. Nope. Dang. Terrible sprites. <laughs> Good sprites. Nah. Okay. For be- uh, best hero, was this is just everyone. Link was number one. Mega Man 2, 3 was Guile. For worst or best villain, okay. who was number one? Uh, Bowser. M. Bison. Yeah, Bison. that's a good villain. Number two. Ganon. Aghanim. Oh. Aghanim, Because wow. nobody beat the game yet. Nobody even knows. Yeah, no one beat the game. They didn't know he's in there. Number three. It's a third-party game. Uh, this is Darth Vader. No. I give up. Dr. Wily. Oh. Ooh, nice. Good choice. All right. So here, this will make you happy, Kyle. Yeah. I'm going to skip ahead. Best overall Super Nintendo game of the year. So this is going to Zelda. Street Fighter II, The World Warrior. Oh. Really? Number two, The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. And number three, Super Mario Kart. So I'm actually, we can stop for a sec. I'm really surprised by that. That people at that time thought Street Fighter 2 is a better game than Zelda is. Yeah. In their year review article, we dubbed this game to be the top Super Nintendo. Mega Man X wouldn't mention in any of that, right? Wasn't so, that Mega Man X here? Uh, so the 93 awards were for 92. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So, so because Dr. Wily's on their blood, I think this is the year before. Well, I think, no, Mega I think Ma- that is I Mega, Mega Man, Man X. X yeah. was 93, 94. 94. I thought it was 94. Yeah. They're still stuck no, on... No, 94 is way too late. Like 92 was, is too Because they had crossover. They had a Mega Man game on the NES after X came out. I think 92 is too early, because that's the first full year of Super Nintendo. I don't think it came out in the first full year of Super Nintendo. But who was that Dr. Wily, then? Oh, for uh, Game Boy. The, uh, oh. Yeah, sorry, for Game Boy. Yeah, uh, Dr. Wily's gone in the time for, of X. Uh, we got Sigma at that Oh, once. you're right, you're right. Sorry, it's for... Uh, so, two. there's two... Uh, Mega Man 2 for Game Boy came out, and Mega Man 4 came out on NES. Whoa. In 92. Okay. So 5 hadn't even come out yet. So I, I'm pretty sure 5 came out first and then X. But Mario Paint was out? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Went, 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 went. And here was the awards, the Nesters. I want a Nestor. Look at that. If anyone has a real Nestor, could you like take a photo of it and send it in? Send us the Nestor. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the challenges. Hey, is this Tetris? No, not Tetris. Dang. That would have been amazing. Uh, sorry. Where is this preview? I just want to see the art. Cause I remember the art is oh, very Dude! Good. The Star Fox comics. <laughs> this is the this is the birth of your Look your fanfic, this. man. Yeah. Inspiration for the fan fiction. Act the four. Man yeah. in the Iron Mask cross Star Fox. Right here. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Damiani, I hate this art. What? I hate this, this art. This is so good. <laughs> this is great. Look at the lines they use. I love it. Look, come on. Look at that. A lot of text. That. A lot of text yeah, in here. Yeah, this good story. Yeah, this Star Fox comic is more text than this art. This is so good. Easy enough, Falco. It's so good. Look at that. Look at them This is some good off. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is some good stuff. Yeah, like, is Falco, like, stop them? You're going to have to scan all of this in, Damiani. Yeah. Oh, these are available. Here we go. Link's Awakening preview. That's all I want to get to. Adventure Never Sleeps. Mm. There we go. Mm. I just want to see what it looked like. Link's Second. Awakening is a very good game. I forgot what it looked like. This holds up. You can Once Upon a one. Dream. That's so good. Uh, I hope this won a bunch of nesters in 93. Probably won everything. All right. Cool. Cool stuff. Nintendo Power holds up. Kirby stuff. Nope. Oh, look at what I didn't tear out of here. The cards. The trading cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. Punch out. Oh, punch out trading cards. So there you go. Yeah, volume number 48. May 93. Batman Returns. But it is time to talk about Super Mario Sunshine for GameCube. Oh, yeah. It came out in fall of 2002. Uh, end of summer. 
It came out. Summer. It was summertime. It came out yeah, like yeah. for sure. It was like a th- like a back to back to back of it was it was Sunshine, uh, Metroid Prime, and Star Fox Adventures. Right, those all came out back to back to back in that 2002 window, like that fall 2000 window. I thought. Sure, I'm. I feel like Star Fox before Metroid. I feel like Metroid was that November game. Yeah, it was a little later. I don't remember exactly when Star Fox. Yeah, I don't remember the order. I just remember the three of them coming out. Yep. Um, And I was like, yes, finally. Yes. GameCube's got all these games I've been waiting for. It was cool they weren't at launch. It's fine. It's been a year later. So that was 15 years ago. During our easy living 50-hour stream, Mm -hmm. we kicked it off with a full playthrough of Super Mario Sunshine. Played it on GameCube, original version. And I want to talk about how do we feel about it after re-experiencing it recently. Do you feel... First of all, let's start. Do you feel good about it? Did you have a good time playing through what you played? Because there are parts... Parts where I was feeling good. There's one part where I felt particularly bad. Um, I'm curious about blood because (laughs) blood seemed to get the short end of the stick with those really difficult... Secret levels. Yep. But that's the thing that that's one of the things that threw me off is like, oh, this isn't really secret. This is like yeah. required level <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to get through. <laughs> you this. must do this. My, my, my memory was off on that. I don't uh, think they had the correct definition of secret at the time. Um, so yeah, h- how did you feel about playing through it again? And when is the last time, if you can remember, that you actually played or touched Super Mario Sunshine? It, 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 more than just like turning it on and checking it out. Like actually sat down and played it for a little bit. I mean, it was, you know, as, as I mentioned on the stream, you know, like, I never actually had played it in English. So, you know, it's been that long, mm-hmm. um, you know, since uh, I, I went through it. Uh, I still had a ton of fun with it. Uh, I will say one of the things that, like, I look back on, I used, I like, uh, I used to kind of write off people that had a hard time with the camera. I was like, <laughs> oh, you got a problem with the camera, that's your own fault yeah. or whatever. It's like, like, no, they're definitely, like, some of those spots where Don was, like, trying to get the camera to see when he was, like, behind that, uh, that thing trying to climb the fences. In the, mu- in the amusement park. In the amusement yep. park. The back end of the amusement yeah. park. That back, yeah, that, that, that was... mission in the amusement park was just, like, what, what exactly happened here? Like, I don't know how you were exactly supposed to get to the top of that Ferris wheel. It's like the camera, it's like they didn't want to take away your freedom with it. The mm. camera in that moment should absolutely just pan out and just show you the entirety of that. You know what I mean? Like also in uh, Nico uh, Harbor, Nico, no, whatever. Rico, the, with the seashells. Oh, and, yeah, and okay. the walls that create a maze as they like indent mm. in. Uh, the camera should just pull out, pull out for us, help us out there. And it's like they didn't want to. They didn't want to take away your freedom. They didn't wanted to re- remove the control from you. My problem with the camera that I personally yeah. had was how it would try and like auto follow you at some times. Like it would it would keep turning with you, um, and it wasn't always so subtle. Yeah. Uh, later Mario games, later 3D games, they the AI for the camera is a lot better. Like or at least the programming how it works, it follows you in what I feel is more naturally, not so sudden and abrupt. There were times when I'm trying to like move in one way and the camera would start rotating in a direction I did not want it to, and like it would just mess me up in yeah. terms of like orientation. I was like, oh, I was going to jump this way. Whoop, camera swoop this way. Whoa, where am I going? That seemed to happen a little too much in Super Mario Sunshine. And I don't remember that happening in any other 3D Mario game like that. And it was mm-hmm. a little frustrating for me. Well, I mean, we should start the conversation with like that. There aren't a lot of 3D Mario games like this. There are two. Yeah. It's this and 64, right. really. And that are out, yeah. Because yeah. we, we don't know the full scale of Odyssey, obviously. Right. But yes, Super Mario 64. Yeah, but we do know that structure like Odyssey is sort of different like it doesn't have like a central hub that you go level to level oh yeah, level. yeah, yeah. you yeah, know it's know, it's yeah. like each world is sort of like a level and a hub in and of itself so yeah very different structure and i gotta say i still love the hub i loved it when it came out Aldofino. and i love it today i think it's something that holds up in particular uh, that is unique about this game that is still interesting yeah, okay. yeah, I like being able to like spray the ground and slide. I forgot all about that whole mm-hmm. slip and slide mechanic. That was great. Um, when you get the uh, the one that like jets you forward and you can just like get out on the water and just like zoom across the waves, it's pretty cool. And like that initial trailer, the first time we saw Sunshine, just looking at Mario, actually it was screenshots. I remember him wall jumping off of buildings, and I thought, wow, that looks cool. And it still is. It's just a nice place to hop around in and explore. Uh, just that hub. The hub feels like a good place to be in. And show off your moves. Play around. 
I guess even though it's smaller, like it, it's definitely like a larger environment than the castle in Super Mario 64. This is yep. I'm making a comparison between 64 and Sunshine here. Um, I felt like each area, maybe it was just because it was the first time, had a better not just atmosphere, but felt a little bit more unique. You start out outside the castle. That's kind of like oh, just go. You can literally go around and run around and try stuff. It's kind of harmless, safe area to do stuff before you go into the castle. I, I don't know what it is. I, I get. I guess looking back at it now, maybe like the castle looks like plain to a lot of people. Like oh, it's these weird corridors and hallways with these paintings. But like the first kind of like lobby area where you can go to all these different doors. There's like so many doors before you. Yes. They have star counts in front of them, and you can't go into all of them. But you have multiple options at first. I felt like there was a little Do bit. You, you have multiple options. No, you go straight to the. You you can go into the you can go to Bob on Battlefield. Yeah. You can go through the two side doors that that, that will lead to a key which can't go anything, or back to where Boo uh, Boo's man, uh, haunted mansion will be. But you can't. There's nothing there yet. So, okay, you're just saying you can walk around. Yeah, you can hub. walk around like okay. that. So yes, right. like sunshine. When you're dropped in sunshine, it's clear. You, it's wide open. It's big. Mm-hmm. Go, go, go around, and this is like the hub environment. Um, I, I guess it was like it was all kind of samey to me. Like once I saw it, it was that's it. Yeah, there are new, uh, like secrets that open up, but the theme was all the same. It's still Isle Delfino. There's still there's either water. There's these, like island buildings or there's like the green hills areas with like a b- little bit of water as well and the boat sailing around it never really changed from that and i get like yeah it's a castle it's still in the castle but like i had like the basement areas where it got like dark and I had like the torches so it was like a little i don't know maybe my imagination's running wild here but i was like oh it's a little creepier down there oh look there's mips down here that fun chase sequence on there like yeah, they do stuff like that then you go higher and it like it's more elegant it's brighter and stuff like and, and the, like oh my gosh like these it's we're getting closer to bowser's like you know like the 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 top level of the, of the castle i don't know like i, I kind of felt like in my head it was running through those things i saw more of that whereas in isle delfino it's like once i saw it it was just other than secrets what I saw is what I got for the rest of the game in terms of that hub. Yeah, um, that's kind of fair. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Banjo-Kazooie's hub was more intriguing to me than uh, Isle Delfino. Oh, sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I, I see that. Yeah, because it's like as you... I, I see what you're saying, because, like, in 64, it's like as you get through levels and you get to see more of the hub, whereas, yeah, Sunshine, aside from the little islands that are out there, there's not much else uh, for you to see. Um... What I will say though, it's really great is how they always uh, they always give you an opportunity to see where all these other levels are at. Yes, you know, like yes, when yes, yes. Uh, even from the first level, if you like back up and you look off the cliff, and it's like, oh, okay, there's that, there's that. Like you can always orientate orient yourself to where each level is, especially like the amusement park is really easy to see from different levels. So it's like. Okay, I got a better sense of where I am on the island, you know. And that was a very deliberate decision, I think, yeah. from from the start. Let's make this feel like a real world. Let's make all of these things actually exactly, feel like yeah. they should exist within this little universe that's never been picked up on again. Yeah, you know, they have not the gone series. anywhere remotely in that direction. Yeah. It doesn't seem like they might ever go back that way. Mm-hmm. And, and that was nice. I think, the, like, a nice evolution of that could have been, like, oh, in a future 3D Mario game, you seamlessly could go to those areas. Like, there might be, like, a, a some kind of, like, Stargate or like you, a gate which has a star requirement, not the Stargate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Stargate. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Sorry, caught myself there. <laughs> um, but you could literally walk up to it, and if you met the requirements, you could seamlessly go. There's no jumping through a painting. There's no going through the M and turning into molecules going through. Yeah, that would be like the the, the future evolution of that, like having a hub environment that connects to these these worlds essentially. You know, what's kind of close actually is the way Splatoon does it. You can mm. see the other hubs from where you are in relation to yeah. each other, but yeah, it's still not quite the same as in terms of an existing real life environment. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll give it that. That like what you said, Bloodworth, that and, and you elaborated on Kyle. That definitely makes it feel like an actual like world that mm-hmm. you stepped into because you're constantly reminded about your surroundings. That oh, I've been there before. I can see it from there. Oh yeah, like I see how everything fits in. Versus the castle wall, it's it's segmented off. It's they had that nice luxury of like. Oh, you just have to see what's here. You don't have to see what's beyond it. You know, it's that it's isolated. Each section is more isolated. You don't see the big picture of everything at all times. Like you, when you're in the bottom floor, you're not like, oh, I, I, I can totally see like Rainbow Ride and uh, Tick Tock Clock from here. Oh, it gets so awesome. Like no, you don't see that at all. Yeah. Um, but like I, I yeah, sorry. And just to finish on that thought, 
the the castle. Like I'm trying to imagine it like if it was made today. They did a remake of Mario 64, like elaborate, more elaborate, like bigger, like increasing the scale to be on par with something like Isle Delfino. Like that. The toads, the toads would have uh, little homes. They would, they would have stuff uh, like yeah, like yeah. The, the the sewers in the bottom would be like mm-hmm. more elaborate and yeah. there'd be a kitchen. Yeah, oh, yeah, there'd That'd be, be great. Sh- like that's where the food world's gonna be. Yes, well, then yeah. you gotta see where where, where Peach bakes that cake. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. You gotta go in the the rooms and yes. stuff. And there is a dungeon. There, where's the throne room in that castle? Come on, where's the throne? Where's room? Where's the throne room? Yeah, where's the throne room? <laughs> yeah, where's the dungeons? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a sewer, but where's the dungeons? Come on, yeah. where are the dungeons? My guess is where the throne room would be is actually behind that fake Bowser face, mm. the one you fall right in front of. Yeah. I bet that's. I bet the throne. No, those are right off there. limits. That was supposed yeah. to be in Super Mario 64 too. We just never got <laughs> it. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, world and camera stuff. Um, let's talk about the actual levels themselves. Great. Uh, they definitely were an evolution of Super Mario 64 in that they kept the open theme. Big, open levels where you're allowed to go, like, anywhere. I want to object to this, though. Okay, object. What do you got? Because what I really like about 64 is there are many objectives you can do at one time. Yeah. You hop into a world, you can do multiple things. You hop into a chapter of Mario Sunshine, there is only one way to finish that chapter. Okay. And so it does feel like go nuts, but it's also you have to do this one thing to finish the chapter. Yeah. As far as I saw, yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of exploration that you can do. There's a lot of little secret spots that you can find, but I don't think that you can ever get a shine that out of one sequence. of those chapter. levels that's yeah. out of sequence. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh well and yeah, no no glitches or shenanigans, or anything like that. But like as it's intended from what I saw, like I don't remember. I, I I would agree with you. Yeah. You want to correct us and point out there's that one time. That's fine. But uh, even if there is one or two times, it's not to the extent of Super Mario 64. And, yeah. and so that, I, yeah. the worlds are huge and intricate, and there are a lot of things to do at any time. But I feel like it's reduced in in how uh, focused it is. So let's say the okay. the the uh, let's go to the harbor, which is called Nico Harbor, I guess. Rico. Rico. Uh, yeah, yeah. R I C C O. Going to Rico Harbor. Uh, let's say that we could. At the beginning, you could choose to go over and ride squids, or you could go take on the giant blooper. You right. know, I think that would be something, and I, I think like I, I'm not understand. I don't not sure why they didn't do that. Uh, yeah. Or that other one where you just climbed up and like got into the cage. You know. Yeah. Like, why, no reason you couldn't do that from the start. Yeah. Pretty sure I know why. Why? I think it's memory limitations because those levels change pretty decently yeah. based on the chapter. And I, I was gonna point out uh, whether you're elaborating on your thought, Kyle. The Mario 64, it's sort of. While you can get different stars at any time, there are certain stars that will only be able to be obtained if you chose that chapter or a certain chapter. Yeah. Period. The the best one is a foot race with Koopa the Crick. You can't do it off the first star. He's not there. Right. Or the snowman's head uh, one where you got to roll the snowball down. It only appears, I think, on star five and six or four, five, and six of that world. Um, so you can kind of see the, the, the groundwork being laid there for... Nintendo was like, oh, we still have the ability to have multiple objectives. Like, you could have go fight the bully boss or go into the volcano. Like, there's all those things you do. The ice maze, one of but my favorites. But in Super Mario Sunshine, I think because of the scale got so much bigger mm-hmm. and everything was more detailed, there's a lot more going on in those levels. I think to have, like, here's a boss battle over here. And here's, like, the super high, like, vertical building structure that you got to go up as well. And then we have a race sequence over here. Like, if they do it, I think, without segmenting it off was too taxing possibly on the GameCube. Sure. Um, but I don't know. In, in in Odyssey, from some of the stuff I've seen, there is some of that, though. That's the whole yeah, game. Yeah, that's the whole game. It's, it's like, there's just keep getting moons. Keep getting moons. Yeah, it's like I they're all over that. the place. Have yeah. a good time. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that, in, in the game's defense again, uh, the way that it is, they're called chapters, some of it does kind of make sense in sequence. I think the hotel, in the, for the most part, the hotel's not there the first time in chapter one. Yeah. You uncover the hotel, and then two, you can go into it, and then it's like, oh, they got ghost problems now, and then you take care of that, and things like that. And so it does kind of escalate, but yeah, it's, you know. Yeah, well, the same thing even with the first level, like, you know, uh, PD Piranha comes back <laughs> in, like, a, a later uh, shine, and then there's the one where... Um, yeah, that I did where the water was all polluted and the the leaves would like disintegrate under you and um, so yeah, so I actually I, I kind of like that that the levels would change up a bit. Um, so it's, yeah, it's kind of weird like thinking about how that, those kinds of things balance out. 
felt like there's kind of more of a narrative behind each level as well. Sure. You talk about the evolution, but like yeah. just the yeah the the hotel thing. There's a story behind it. Oh, yeah. like we the guests need to get in. Not a guest in there. Oh, it's haunted. You mm-hmm. gotta do something about it. it yeah, or the CCL yeah. level where it's like constantly the guy's like, okay, I think that the water's getting polluted for this reason or that reason. And that's one of those things that I totally missed playing the game in Japanese. Sure. Like, yeah. You know, it was like, okay, like I, I just did things um, without realizing like why I was doing them. And like the same thing, oh, okay, I, I kind of get it. Like the water's polluted and why is it polluted? Um, and you just, you know, step by step uh, process of elimination trying to figure it out. More context in each level. In Super Mario Sunshine, Kyle. Yeah, then Super we'll Mario probably 64. ever see again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 64 tried to do it in some places. Uh, like, even when I was talking about Snowman's head, when you walk up to it, the guy gives you a story. Oh, I can't, my body's not complete. Can you guide me down and stuff? But th- that that's, like, the furthest it ever goes. Something like that. Like, a line, of, a few lines of dialogue. And in, a lot of times, it's random. Like, the other snow level, where you get up to the top of Snowman's head, mm-hmm. where it tries to blow you off, mm-hmm. he just starts talking to you randomly when you get up there by the penguin. He's like, oh, who's here? Uh, you're not supposed to be up here. I'm going to blow you off. Ha, ha, ha. It's like, okay, cool story. Yeah. And I think there's something to seeing the seashell creatures in uh, in the uh, the hub world and then finding out where they live later. I think there's something to that. I yeah. think that's kind of neat. And same with the Piantas. You see their, their village much later on in the game. I think that's kind of neat. Uh and again, Odyssey does that. You you see the little uh, the the guys from the desert world before you actually get to the desert world, which I'm so into. I'm way into that kind of thing. Um, in regards to the context and, and narrative elements, I will say, uh, seeing it again, I don't like the overarching story that's as it's presented it's bad. in Sunshine, right. especially it's the, bad. Op- we the talk opening about that. the opening sequence, the the CG stuff and landing, and then. The development of the story, like with Peach, well, Flood's just sort of there. And Flood's this—you walk up to Flood and has a story, and it's like I get it's t- tied to Professor Egad, and there's like some connections there. If you've played They're Luigi's fake Mansion, connections at best. but yeah, it's to me. I'll be uh, really honest here. I felt it was excessive. This mm-hmm. was a strong replaying it was a strong case of I want less story in my Mario games. I'm sorry, like I, I just need a tiny bit of context. Uh, like the the shines give you at the beginning of each world, it's plenty of context for me. Mm-hmm. I don't need that. I don't need CG cutscenes and stuff like that uh, with Mario's everyone in Mario World talking, but Mario, mm-hmm. and it's so didn't need that. Didn't need that. I don't know how you felt about that. Well, it's kind of like you wrote the worst possible story and then said shrug your shoulders and say, well, we can't do a story again because you don't like it. They wrote a bad, bad story. The story of this game is. Bowser Jr. is disguising himself as Mario to get Mario framed to steal Princess Peach because he thinks he's his mama. Bowser said Princess Peach is his mama, so he would steal Princess Peach. To what end? And so it's just, it's all dumb. It was a a poorly (laughs) conceived story that uh, I think the hook initially is kind of interesting, and then the resolution is awful. The hook of Mario getting arrested is pretty fun. Mario's framed, and so to uh, to do your community service, I guess, you have to clean up this island and complete missions. That's fun. That's a cool idea, but then just totally, there's no reason for any yeah. of the rest of it. Well, and then as somebody pointed out, I forget who, um, like once Bowser Jr. is revealed, why do you keep seeing him? Oh, that was just, Jones. That was a good Jones yeah, nitpick. Yeah, why yeah, why yeah. disguise as, uh. as, uh, as Mario anymore? <laughs> yeah, the jig is up, and he's still like you still have to chase like Shadow Mario everywhere. Yeah, and the one thing I could possibly say is that you know because you could go into those worlds in any order, then sure, like it would be harder to program like it being Bowser Jr. you're chasing mm-hmm. if if you've already discovered Bowser Jr. You know, like you have two different versions of that that chase. Uh, but yeah, it's still really weird. Also, the weir- really weird, you know, kind of Nintendo-ish thing of why is Bowser Jr. even a character when we had all the like Koopalings and like Mario Brothers Three and Mario oh, World? Oh yeah, it's I don't like, want to get into that. All of a sudden, this Bowser aside. Jr. shows up, and uh, who is he? <laughs> By the way, I love that they brought the Koopalings back. Yeah, I thought they were gone forever. Old? Yeah, and Mario Kart, you know, like they're oh, yeah, they're legit, and Smash Bros. You know, they're they're. They're welcome. Oh, yeah, they added them into the yeah, yeah, They yeah. are embraced today, which I really like. Um, I will say that to anyone who's going to say, like, but I like story in Mario games. There are certain types of Mario games that exist that are perfect for story. Mm-hmm. It's the RPG ones, uh, Mario and Luigi and the Paper Mario series. 
Go all in this on This game could have had a good story, I would say. It could have had a better have. story. Yeah. I, I think, like, Galaxy 1 story is about as much as I'd want. That's a good thing to point a, to, as yeah. As well done as I, I could like. Mm-hmm. Because they give you a decent amount of context. But to get a little bit more in depth, a lot of the stuff is optional. Like, the, the, the storybook stuff about the Lumos and the, yeah. the Rosalina and the origin story about what yeah, they really yeah. are. That... You don't have to really get into that if you don't want to. But if you want to go deeper in there, you can kind of see that stuff and be like, oh, I'm getting more context to the world. Um, Galaxy 2, I, I joke, like, oh, it's superior because it has less story. It's just, as a direct sequel, uh, uh, it seemed like it was almost ignored Galaxy 1. It was just like, hey, we're doing the same game again, just different worlds and stuff. I didn't need story in that one. Like, if you're just r- literally making more of the same don't try and go ham with this weird sequel idea to, like for a story. Just give me more cool worlds. Give me new powers. Give me more galaxy-style gameplay, and I'm good. Sure, sure. Uh, but if you're making a whole new original Mario, like Odyssey, I'm sure there's there's clearly a story in there. There's the the Bowser, the hat, the those rabbit gang, the the wedding planners or whatever. Mm. There's, there's clearly going to be it's a lot coming, of... It's coming, man, yeah. yeah. There's going to be a lot of story in that. A lot of NPCs you can go and talk to. Uh-huh. And they'll give you a lot of context clues. This is a stealth Odyssey hype podcast. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting me so excited about Odyssey. Oh, for you it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you were asking, though, about the uh, the challenge levels yes, or whatever, the floodless yes. levels. Yes. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I think it was definitely, definitely good for the time because we had never seen anything like that. We'd never been on those kind of bottomless pit kind of things uh, other than the Bowser levels in 64. Um, but uh, in 3D... You know, and I think, yeah, I think they were just not quite there yet. I think Galaxy is where they like really nailed how to do that stuff. I also, but I also think at the same time, they they did suffer a little bit from the pressure of us being on camera and us trying to get through it a set amount of time, to where it's just like it's like no, I have to get I have to get through this now. It's too hard for me to get through in just like one or two runs. Um, the other thing I would say though is like a lot of the mechanics uh they were sort of based on not sliding off of things mm-hmm. which i think is a little bit of a pain in the butt like I'm sorry, this, what do you mean like there would be you know those things that we'd rotate on and we'd have to like slowly walk over the edge that rotates tapping yeah rather than like just jumping or, or something like that like you'd have to have like very precise control on the analog stick i found hopping is a really good strategy for those too I mean, it just kind of depends on like what works for you, and then yeah. there's also like you were saying, like that's a place where you really shouldn't have freedom of camera, like oh, having the right can... camera angle for each yeah. part of that challenge would have been a yeah, lot, especially a the lot better rotating uh, rectangular like log looking platform things when there were like be multiple directions. Mm-hmm. And you'd have to like jump to the other one, and you can't quite see what's ahead. So you're trying to walk in a certain angle to keep running uh, up the inclines to stay on it, while also trying to rotate the camera. Like when I was doing it, I was like, I was just making a quick tap motion to C stick and praying it went far enough to see straight because I didn't want to have to like. It was almost like I, I can't, I shouldn't be doing dual analog while also trying to handle this platforming mechanic. Like that's a little too much. Like and, like the camera having like smart angles for that part. Like just rotating after you safely land like doing a quick rotate for like an optimal angle would have been so nice mm-hmm. for some of those especially like the the one where the rotating cube kept going vertical mm-hmm. would have been nice to like, have an overhead or a, like a more overhead angle because every time it was kind of like defaulted to the side and you could sort of see but you couldn't judge like depth very it well does, it, it's so rotation shifts too yeah. it doesn't rotate in one yeah. set pattern yeah, yeah man that thing's nasty uh, i will definitely say not I know why they didn't put a long jump in the game because of the flood mechanics, mm-hmm. but not having it in the uh, tra- these these challenge rooms, uh, I think added more to the challenge of them. There are a lot yeah. of jumps that would have been made a lot easier yeah. um, if you could have done long jump in it. And uh, I missed the punch too. Oh yeah, there's no punch. Mm-hmm. There's I no love punch. that punch. There's no like combat like that in yeah. this game of that degree. No slide tackle. Yeah. Um. So well, you can press A then B. But that won't do damage, you're saying? You don't do a slide, like a kick tackle. Oh, gotcha, oh, gotcha. Like, a, like the actual slide tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think there were some cool moves in Mario 64 that didn't really come back. But, but here's what's crazy to me, is that most of the crazy moves in Mario 64, you don't need to know. Oh, yeah, you, you absolutely and, don't and, need and to And in, know like, them. 3D World and things like that, you don't need to know how to do the little... But you couldn't do that spin jump in 64. 
uh, the, the rotate the analog stick fast and do yeah, yeah. Oh, okay that was cool yeah like, but that, again like uh, you wouldn't need to know it and in, in most mario games you don't need to know those advanced moves in this game you cannot finish it you can't get to the credits unless you know the crazy moves and you, yes you execute them and it's because of those secret worlds yeah the multiple like wall jump stuff the multiple like, wall jumps asking you and like if you fail you die it's like yep. it's not like in 64 there's one place in 64 early on in the snow level where they want you to do wall kicks wall jumps will work and they want you to do two of them, but not in succession. You got to do one successful one yeah. to get up to a platform, and then another one completely bypass it with a cool shortcut. But there's never that degree of executing them simultaneously as in those challenge levels. Yeah, that is required, and they are required to to get to the seventh star, which is the showdown with uh, Shadow Mario or Bowser Jr. Yeah, uh, which is the trigger to one of the triggers to make the final encounter. I did want to talk about that uh, as well, because again, the only way to get to the credits is to beat every level seven times, get Mm -hmm. to chapter seven of each world, which again is, is strangely more constraining than what Mario 64 presented you with, which is just, you know what, get whatever stars you want, (laughs) which I love. I love that freedom. I love that game design. And so it's interesting. They went here with this, where it is like, you are not going to progress until you get to chapter seven of each chapter of each world. I think, it might have been somewhat in response. I don't have anything to back this up. I can only sure. speculate that maybe it was in response to seeing players outright skip entire worlds in Super Mario 64 to get yeah. 70 stars because, mm. I, I oh, this world's too hard. I'm going to go to the next one. Or I just uh-huh. don't like this. That's good. That, that's that, a good yeah. thing, and though. <laughs> while we think that's good, maybe at the time they're like, oh, we did so much work on that level. Like We at least want them to try... Maybe this time they were they were like, we made very specifically crafted worlds for you to enjoy... We want you to go through them. Mm-hmm. I think this was the complete extreme other, or closer to the other extreme where it was yeah. forced. Yeah. And was not, it, it, they like overcompensated for that. That was the reason. Like they didn't strike a nice balance or like, maybe you have to go into each world once. You just have to get one star from each world and that's it. Yeah. That would have been a nice compromise. Even three would have been fine. Yeah. yeah so it's seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a lot. I completely forgot about that until you looked it up, Kyle. I was like, oh, that's how you do it. Because like, I'm pretty sure it's not the amount of shines you get. I think. There's a trigger, like some kind of boss battle, I think, in each level that, mm-hmm. and you're like, yeah, it's a Shadow Mario encounter. I'm like, oh gosh, now I remember this. Um, for uh, the flood system, we, we we talked about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about the, the the flood mechanics, the water, all the water, uh, uh, wow, shooting and hovering and stuff like that? Did you like it? Do you like how it was utilized? Or because for whatever reason, I remember critics having uh, an aversion to it when it first came out. Because it feels like a gimmick. The, yeah, they it feels like, like yeah. it came at the cost of some of the pure platforming. And for some weird reason, I remember a bunch of people back in the time, despite them claiming they were hard, loving those classic levels. Because, like, that's pure Mario platforming right there. Mm-hmm. Why wasn't every world more like this or more in the vein of this? You don't need the flood. But it seems like reading some of the feedback to our own stream, people were like, man, those classic levels seem horrible and stuff. Oh, Flood was awesome. So yeah. it seems like maybe minds have changed in the 50 <laughs> years. So how do you feel about Flood now? Here's what I remember about the Flood. Back me up on this if you remember this too. Ahead of release, I remember reading an interview where Miyamoto felt the GameCube controller and the way that it squ- their triggers squish in and then click. And he's like, oh, that's a squirt gun. And <laughs> oh, okay. that's the reason why Flood exists. <laughs> And it does. It feels good in that manner, in that analog trigger where if you just press it lightly, it just... But if you click it in, you're, you're bursting out uh, that water. Like, there's something, I think, innately enjoyable about that. Uh, I like it. I really do like the flood. Uh, it's... I, I like shooting. I like, you know, when it's over the shoulder. I like it when you're just shooting thing and spraying things. It feels good to, like, clean up goo. Uh, I'm And... Yeah, I like the jet boost and I like the rocket boost. I think that those two things maybe could have been utilized in more fun ways. Uh, they come kind of late in the game, I think. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a bad thing to say about the flood. Where do you where do you stand, blood? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm along with you. I, I like that, you know, like holding it down, uh, like halfway, lets you like continue to walk around and, and use it. Whereas like if you click it in, it's like okay, then you're planted in and you're mm-hmm. just aiming. Um, and then, um, and again, like I said, the whole, the whole mechanic of, you know, being able to like do the slip and slide thing is great. And, and, and also the fact that like, they've got the reflections built in (laughs) to the water when you spray the water down. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I think is really interesting is, uh, that, uh, they've uh, like accounted for this idea of like, you lose pressure. So if like you hold it down for too long, then you, you've got to like stop and like press it again. Yeah. Cause it'll just peter out. 
Um, yeah, yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about flood. I like, I do like using the uh, the hover for sure, like to get across gaps, and there's fun things that you can do with that. Um, spraying the while you're doing a spin jump and hitting everything in a circle, and uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I, I, yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about flood. And I do, Damiani, remember the same reviews that said, like, the whole game should be the challenge worlds. That those are the height of the game. I'm trying to remember if they That being, like, a bullet yeah. point of just, I'm trying like, to remember if they complained about Flood because it made it too easy. Like, it was forgiving. Because mm -hmm. if you screw up a jump, activate hover. Oh, now you're going to be able to glide over there. There's, like, less of a challenge in that. Um, that it was more of a crutch for the platforming. But so I little of the know. game is actually that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't remember. I didn't really have any real overt like overt negative feelings towards it when we were replaying it this mm -hmm. weekend um i seen my biggest gripe about the game besides the camera seemed to be like cleaning up stuff like i i just didn't like the concept or uh, now sure. i don't like going through and spraying these like puddles like or these goop things to like clean them up and like clear out spaces and stuff that part of the game there's more of like an action adventure element and i do favor more of the pure platforming style of Mario. Uh, having an occasional enemy or something to bounce on or take on is fine with me, which leads me to my other gripe was I most of the boss battles I saw, I didn't like. Uh, they were either too, they were like the simple stuff, which is fine, but specifically the second PD thing. Because maybe it was just because I was, I was jumping in again and I hadn't played it in so long. That battle seemed really not well designed oh the one where he flies, flies all over the place that's just sad man that's bad uh, that's it, legit it was bad. Like, i was like yeah. this is taking too long like yeah. even you know I, i'm sure if you know what to do you could like rush it a bit but as a first time like it, it felt more like playing it for the first time because i forgot about that it was just like so excessive like uh, there are parts of like man this is not fun i'm just gonna like i started to just, like stop caring mm -hmm. i was like i don't care how i beat this like i'm just gonna take my time and just do whatever i want at this point um uh some of the fights seemed okay, like the, the, the octopus one, like hitting the tentacles and pulling on that. Um, th they get Some of them got points for being simple enough that they are like the, the, they're, they just don't interrupt the, the pacing of the but flow. What about that boo boss fight, man? That's just that's a terrible boss fight. Oh, I think I wasn't... Uh... It's a slot machine. Oh, yeah. It's a slot that machine boss fight. That was terrible. That was what yeah. I did. Yeah, 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 that one. That was bad. Like there, So, yes, there were a lot of yeah. bad boss encounters mm -hmm. in that game. Um, and, and I think that was a strong testament in my mind. But the one on the roller coaster is pretty sweet. Roller coaster one, I, as Brad played, it looked cool. Every, my memory of it is while it was fun to look like look at and it, exhilarating, control wise, it was a nightmare to like line up and stuff. I remember having mm, a lot sure. of trouble with that fight uh, back in the day. Like I remember dying a lot and getting angry. I was like, okay, because I, I couldn't hit Bowser enough, and then like the bullet bells just got too frantic and stuff. I was just getting hit too much. Like, all right, no. Um, I think, in my opinion, it's it's a strong enough argument that like keep the boss encounters in Mario very simple, and hinge on like just very simple mechanics. Like they can get a little increasingly difficult, but all the Super Mario sixty four enemies were very straightforward and, and I think pretty simple, nothing complicated. Uh, you had Bob King Bob which is get behind him. Yep. Uh, if you try and move too soon after hitting him, he just keeps spinning with you. You just have to learn to stop, stop. Yep. And then go around him. Giant like, thwomps kind of giant thwomps is I fall over, get on my back. Yeah, uh, the, the hand hands. boss. Yeah. It's like the eye is wide open. It's like, what do you do? Like that actually involves some combat. It was a little interesting. Yeah. Um, that might have been the most complicated boss. Even Bowser was like, run behind, grab its tail, and spin him. It was all stuff that you were constantly using. Yes. In in, in, in the game, except for like the spin thing, I think was unique to Bowser. And I think though, if you think about like what it means to pick up Bowser's tail and throw him around, that's such a cool interaction you're having with this villain. It's so much more fun than him just hanging out in a hot tub and you just let it splash his oh, hot tub around. Oh, yeah, that was... It's that, a, that was, like... Nah, that it's final a de-escalation. Like, uh, you have to escalate always. And like, that boss battle just stinks. It's a stinky boss battle. Think about Galaxy's B Bowser, like the, the big planet toy, and he's, like, rolling around and... Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, he makes an <laughs> impact, like, shock waves and bullet bills and balls. Like, that was... I, I like that. It's mm -hmm. basically keeps combining stuff you've seen before and just makes it more and more chaotic. Right. Where I think... This hot tub thing came out Sunshine, of nowhere. Sunshine, they're trying to be a little bit more unique with stuff. Like, here's something yeah. unique you've never seen before. It's not really utilizing all the stuff you've seen before. It's just random. And yeah, you're just jostling around a hot tub and then Bowser dies. Some of it felt like more in the vein of rare bosses. Ooh. A little bit. Ouch, Donnie. A little bit. Just <laughs> a tiny bit. But not done as well. Yeah, yeah. So... 
That that I felt like they learned their lesson because I haven't seen anything like that in the three D Mario games, boss wise. That is like a, to the degree, to the degree of what I saw in Sunshine. No, the Bowser fight, Bowser fights since then have been he- like great. Yeah. If you look at the three D Land and three D World Bowser boss fights, those are ten out of tens. Mm, good stuff. Um, trying to think about like hey, the, the, we talked about the world stuff. Uh, oh, the music. How, how mm. did you guys like the the music? And how did you like how it looked? I know we're playing on HD TV and it's blowing up and stuff, but oh, how, it looks are fantastic. Yeah, how do you feel still. about the visual side? Because I think it got a lot of. Did it get a lot of flack back in the day? I, I'm trying to remember. I think it's the, the, the texture quality in places. It's kind of. Oh, it's more apparent yeah. <laughs> now. Maybe for visual variety, but I think graphically then and graphically still, it's just it's a beautiful game. Mm-hmm. The music. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Great, great song. Stuck to the theme, at least. I like, I like. I seem to remember more of the GameCube games sticking with like unique themes for their games. Like uh, Wind Waker was the Celtic stuff. It was oh, like this yeah, un- unified theme throughout. I was like, whoa, yeah. they're just going with this. And then obviously Sunshine, like the tropical theme, mm-hmm. it's really cool. Also went the game. Um, Metroid Prime, obviously, like it's sci-fi, but like the more industrial sounding stuff mixed in with uh, Sort of like older school, like Metroid sound, like themes reimagined. Uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I just don't remember any like standout songs from Sunshine right now, other than the that. Yes, that. That's like it. Like I can't. There's no other like. There's no other level where it's like, oh, it's like Dire Dire Docks, like the soothing melody. Well, the one in the the seashells is like that. Trying to remember what that one was. Yeah, you know what? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. They're they're hard to do do. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're hard to do to, which like is, you Bowser's? know, like Mario games are easy to do to. Yeah. Um, yeah, like even Bomb on, Bomb on Battlefield. Dun, 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 dun. Maybe I just played yeah. too much. You know, uh, talking I'll, about I'll world design, you think about, you like, Bomb on Battlefield, I think, still holds up as a really good level design because it's just get to the, get up there. See that point? Just find your way up to that. And I don't think that's present in many of these worlds at all. To see that thing? Just get up there. That's That's what your goal is right now. And I think maybe we did that in Rico Harbor, but like otherwise, you know yeah. what I mean? I just, that to me is just so innately enjoyable in a platformer. It's just see that yeah. thing, just get there, just go it was there. Either, it was either the challenge levels yeah. or just the fact of getting through it. And then there was like maybe one shine per world that really captured that spirit. Like yeah. Rico, Rico Harbor, just getting to the top of that structure along the narrow fun, like yeah. pathways and stuff. And it was like that, that, that's just get up there. Mm-hmm. Or uh, yes, I think. I talked about it on my mini episode about Super Mario 64 that the the obstacle course nature of the worlds and levels in Super Mario 64 mm-hmm. something I really love about that game that I feel like they've just gone further and further away from. Yeah. Sunshine was the last one to even try and do that, but now replaying it, it might, I I think I might have been too favorable in that memory of it in that yeah, it's these open like like a hub with other or sorry, open environment for each level. But only one shine to get. Like I completely forgot you couldn't get multiple shines. Me too. Like, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. And I forgot that most of them are this uh, activity stuff with a little bit of platforming mixed in. There are a lot of them that are, like has nothing to do with platforming, and a yeah. lot of them it's just racing or go talk to the right NPCs and navigate your way through the hotel. Like you don't even have to jump if you really don't want to. You just walk around. Well, that's I mean direct and comparable to the uh, N64 Mario 64 Ghost M- Mansion. I think they're basically the same thing, and that's one of my favorite uh, 64 stars is going around killing all the ghosts in the, in their mansion. Oh yeah, like that's like, it's pretty much the same as that. I'll forgive them for that one. I mean, yeah, for that one-on-one level, but like star star to shine comparison, like what the objectives are, yeah. other than like get eight coins, which they each share. Mm-hmm. I think more of the stars in Mario 64 are more about involve a lot more platforming. Uh, required platforming to get to their stuff. Even though it might not be as long of a stretch because obviously sometimes the worlds are much bigger. Yeah. But I think the amount of time you're spending actually doing jumps and stuff is probably higher uh, in in 64 for the, for the requirements. Yeah. What's uh, what's the world called where it has a different water levels and you can dig deep and find like this hidden civilization? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, I'm forgetting the name of the world, but it's like the, one of the upper level ones where you jump into the painting at a certain level yeah. and the water's there higher top. I love uh, that world. I love I that so much. Name. And um, it's, a, it's a really good mix of platforming and world design. Like there's there's platforming to be doing. Hidden Town. At yeah, the end of the I love that, that stuff. Or whatever. The, the, yes. The, the corridor. And yeah, like that level, like if you think about that level, it's the main area. Like it, it's a bunch of block layers. Like all mm-hmm. the levels, or even the ones that kind of have a theme, like the snow levels. Like there's still... I mean, because of the time, but everything was, like, very blocky, like, meant to be, like, you could jump here to here to here and get up to there. 
It was just great. Like, this thing about Lethal Lava Land, the lava level. There's yeah. just so much random stuff for over that level. There's a volcano in the middle. Is that the one the pyramid? There's a, no, no, not the pyramid. No, the no. Oh, okay. the lava land. Okay. Where there's like a, a Bowser picture, like uh, oh, that yeah, keeps yeah. rearranging. Mm -hmm. And there's an island with some a boss on it. And there's yeah. an island with mini versions of him. If you kill them, then the boss shows up. Then there's one with a rolling log on it, and like there's just it's just a whole scatter shot thing, and it works for some reason. Like because it's like that's what I mean when I talk about like the obstacle course nature of Mario sixty four. Yes. Is that they weren't trying to make as strong of a unified, like, connected, oh, I feel like I'm in an actual place, so much as there's a theme to this area, mm -hmm. and but it's a bunch of, like, random challenges. But fun you can do things all. to do. Yeah. Think about this game. It has a casino, and there are no fun things to do in the casino. <laughs> How crazy is that? Yeah, that's so... Like, I guess one, 664 is more sandboxy, mm -hmm. or you can play around, where Sunshine is definitely more, I think, more adventure. It has yeah. more adventure elements. It's, sure. It's more... Uh, it strings you along a little bit more, and it required directions to go. I would agree with that. Nice. Um, I don't. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've. Anything else to say? I was wondering if we want to give final thoughts. Sure. On, on Sunshine, unless there's something we passed up that I didn't talk about that you really wanted to mention about Sunshine. Uh, so as I said previously on this podcast, I never owned an N64, and I didn't play Mario 64 until uh, the 2010s. What was it like? Oh. Three years ago, I played Mario 64 for the first time. So Sunshine was like my first entry into that. Oh. Had my GameCube, was really excited to play it. And so, yeah, uh, I think for for the last 15 years, I've always defended it big time. Everybody, you know, I, I think when it came out, it was a disappointment. And for many years afterward, it was a disappointment. Uh, and I think we look at it more fondly because of the direction that Mario games have gone in. They've, they've lost the 3D adventure aspects of them. Uh, so playing back through it, definitely see, see some flaws. And I would say Mario 64 is a better video game, but Sunshine is still unique. There's still many, many unique things about Mario Sunshine, and there's still many, many great things about it that I think it stands out. I think it stands the test of time in some certain aspects and, and still manages to be a fun video game. Yeah, because it would be five years till the next 3D, the real new 3D Mario game would come out. Galaxy came out in 2007. Yeah. 2002 yeah. was Sunshine. So there's a, that was probably like one of the longest gaps between a new... like. Same similar type of Mario game, like 3D Mario game. Was six, well, 2000, no, I guess 96 to 2002 was six years. Was, there been yeah. there been long gaps, but we've kind of been spoiled in, in the last few years. Like since we had 2007, 2009 with Galaxy, and then we had 3D World, and now like Odyssey, and like not too like four year span. They yeah. don't come out that often, I guess. Let yeah. me correct myself. They yeah. don't yeah. come out that often. It's a big so deal when a new they're Mario a big game deal when a new out. 3D yeah. Mario game comes out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of. A little bit with Kyle in in that, you know, I I didn't uh, I didn't remember the the flaws as, as easily, you know, like I I had a, a pretty pretty high impression of the game, and now it's like it's easy to see. It's like okay, that that thing there was kind of dumb. That's that's pretty dumb. Um, I always yeah, I was always a little weird on Bowser Jr. Though um, <laughs> I just didn't understand why he was there. Um, but I still think, yeah, overall, like, it's it's a super fun game to play that that gets tends to get more thrown at it than it deserves, uh, and I, I definitely think it's worth uh, a good playthrough, even if if there are some headache spots in there. Do you this did this playthrough change your mind at all about uh, it, the the rumors about the H, an HD version of it possibly coming? Who knows if it's coming? But if there were to be an HD port of this. Are you still on board for that? Would you would you replay that? At they're gonna have to make some changes. Okay. Yeah, I think they're gonna, they're gonna have, have to, to make some changes. They're gonna have to do some some camera options for sure. Yep. Just that's one thing. Like all of us like struggled with getting in. It's like wait, I move the camera this way and that. Oh, okay. You know. Mm -hmm. Just and you and you're stuck with that. Like there's there's no inverting anything on that camera. Yeah. I feel like if they made the changes, those changes, especially the camera stuff. Like I hate inverted controls. It. I uh, was struggling a lot to adjust to those. Um, if they made those changes and a few other changes, um, even if they didn't make an HD remake, but just like if those changes were present in this game, like I'd feel extremely good about this game. Like uh, despite some of the design flaws, I, I think this is like a really really good game. Um, I still think it's a, it's a good game after replaying it, but I think uh, the uniqueness kind of is co like compensates for a lot of the flaws and mm -hmm. i think maybe that's 
what a lot of its defenders used for so long is that like those elements like you've never seen a Mario game like this since or yeah. there's nothing like it before that mm-hmm. this is a one of a kind Mario game yeah like we need more Mario's like that what they should you know be bold and try something new but while I still think it's a good game I think I'm I put it right alongside 3D World is probably like at the bottom of my 3D Mario list there's only five there's only five so it's Ooh, let's do this real quick or is this a whole episode this, this would be a whole episode okay uh, ranking uh, the we'll, we'll, ranking we'll the Mario's it, okay ranking 3D Mario's because we, we have to get into it we'd have to debate some stuff like yeah I'm ready to go just throwing baby. on a list out there so without any context yeah yeah enough time for okay, that okay look forward to that but future episode this, this playthrough like uh it was already it it elevated a little bit, yeah. but it, it didn't elevate it enough to pass any of the, the other games. I rank ahead of it. Sure. So, I think that's that's going to be it. That was good stuff. Uh, it's much easier when you have two other people to talk about this. <laughs> oh, then your Mario, solo episode? The Mario 64. Yeah. Because yeah. I needed people like, oh, like I'm going to say this statement. It's disagree with it or something and make me defend it or something. It was like, mm-hmm. no, nah, I'm just saying my stuff. So... This is more of how those episodes are supposed to go. So <laughs> now you have a comparison for, for viewers out there. Check out the Mario 64 episode. Look at this one. I'm pretty confident you can say you like this better because it's an actual discussion. Um, but, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe people are like, no, I still want the other type of video. We'll see. Uh, and again, uh, no last call. And it is changing because we're going to let you do general Nintendo q and It's too difficult <laughs> trying to, like, pick the subject. Especially when it's new stuff and it's just coming out. Like, imagine, Kyle, if you, like had to pick a hey everyone you have to submit your questions about this for this episode and it has to be and it has to be about a topic we're talking about on the podcast oh for like the easy allies podcast yeah, yeah it, i don't do it yeah, I don't, that would I don't, yeah I, there I would be no love and respect yeah probably mm-hmm. so that that is changing so thank you for your patience that uh but bring back uh dear nintendo hope that uh brought a smile to your face that will we'll, i'll try and keep that going for each mm-hmm. episode regardless of the subject uh but again thank you very much for joining me um and uh not ripping out your hairs uh, in ripping out your hair regarding us spending so much time together over easy living. <laughs> I think we all got a, we got along very swimmingly. Yeah. Together. Yeah, yeah. We managed. We managed. Yeah, yeah. But uh, thank you again for being uh, on this podcast, and we will see you all next time on Friend Code.